welcome to the second DCU TV news broadcast of the year. I'm Rachel Kelleher and today we'll be taking a look at some of the latest news stories surrounding campus life. With Donald Trump voted the 46th President of the United States, students certainly had a lot to say about it. Reporters Lee Mashin and Ushin McQuirins took to the campus to ask members of the student body their thoughts on the President-elect. For those who have chosen not to support me in the past, of which there were a few people, I'm reaching out to you for your guidance and your help so that we can work together and unify our great country. The world was in shock this morning with the news that Donald J. Trump has been elected the 45th President of the United States of America. Momentum swung in Trump's favor after winning key battleground states, Florida, Ohio, Iowa, and North Carolina, to put him within touching distance of the presidency. Everybody's just like trying to realize what's going on here and like hopefully things will work out okay is kind of the kind of the vibe. It's like we didn't think this was happening, but it's happening. Like it's always been a joke, but now now it's just it's actually happening. It's crazy. <laughs> um, it's very discouraging. I did not think it was gonna happen. I told many people yesterday there was no way it was gonna happen, but I was very shocked this morning when I woke up and very disappointed. The president elect is planning to triple the US deportation force which could deport up to 1.2 million people per year. Um, well, I did a J1 last year and it, like, I'm lucky enough to be one of the people to actually go. And now that he's here, he's trying to get rid of J1s and that's kind of given a lot of Irish students problems because they've already planned it and now they're not going to be able to. At 70 years old, Trump is the oldest president to be elected to the White House, while his wife Melania from Slovenia will be the first foreign-born First Lady. Donald Trump will officially begin his four years in office on the 17th of January 2017, when his inauguration will take place. Ushi McQuarrens, DCU TV News. DCU's Debate SOC held an event this week to consider the ongoing arguments for and against repealing the Eighth Amendment. Our reporter, Rebecca Lumley, attended the heated debate. The first answer is to export and deny. Exportation and denial, regardless of what the topic is. Export the issue to Britain. And deny even it happens. Well, it does. 3,451 in 2015. 18 of which were under 16. DCU Debate Society's first event of the year took place last Thursday and saw students debate the issue of abortion. They discussed the pros and cons of repealing the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution, which criminalises abortion in Ireland. Our side is currently against the Eighth Amendment simply because a vote against the Eighth Amendment is a vote for complete and utter uncertainty. What will replace the Eighth Amendment in legislation? Nobody knows. Nobody has come up with a plan. The pro-choice side has not given us a legal plan which they aspire to follow. So the vote for against the Eighth Amendment is a vote for complete and utter uncertainty. It leaves a void in legislation which then can be exploited any which way and nobody knows which way that could go. They are awful the ordeals that women go through. No matter how awful they are, they, it is still the ordeal of an abortion, of going through an abortion, of being abortion, I would argue, is a greater ordeal <coughs> than having the abortion performed on yourself. And, um, the crowd was also addressed by two keynote speakers on either side of the debate, which provoked a passionate response from one audience member. Okay, the murder issue, let's deal with it. If you believe it's murder, don't do it, okay? And if you don't believe it's murder, you shouldn't be stopped doing it. Most people in the world do not believe it's murder. You have no authority at all. Your profession is an evil. Okay. Though the second speaker who argued on the pro-life side attracted a less heated response. People here tonight need to be cognizant of the positive impact and influence the Eighth Amendment has had upon society. The truth is, a repeal of the Eighth Amendment would inevitably result in lives being lost. 
We heard Craig mention earlier, what way is this to treat women? When in fact we know, when we look to the UK, an investigation um, by a newspaper in 2012 stated very clearly that abortions are taking place on grounds of gender. And guess which, which gender is being discriminated against and which gender is being aborted? Female babies. What way is that to treat unborn female babies? What way is it? What way do we treat them? What way do we hold them within regards in our society? We spoke to Society Chair Seamus Cummins about organising the event and making sure both sides received fair representation. Okay, so to keep the debate impartial, like it, it, it's, it's really hard, especially with such contentious topical issues. Like I did a little speech at the start, I just wanted to make sure that no one heckled. I, I didn't want anything happening that was like not above board. It can, it can lose track of, um, of your head when matters of the heart come involved. You know, t topical issues like this really does just split the population. So we had um, guest speakers from both sides. Both sides were well represented with boys and girl speakers, and uh, we were completely impartial. The debate society's next event will focus on the issue of political correctness and whether political correctness has gone too far. Rebecca Lonely, DC TV News. With depression affecting one in ten Irish people, mental health services are being made more accessible to sufferers all over Ireland. DCU provides a number of crucial student support services that are available all year round that students may not be aware of. Our reporters spoke to Anne O'Connor, who is head of the Disability and Support Services at DCU, about the importance in students availing of the facilities that they provide. Kira Moran and Shirley Donlan report. With Mental Health Awareness Week taking place last month, some DC students decided to raise awareness by creating their own campaign. The idea behind it was uh, 30 days of selfie, so it's in, in conjunction with Mental Health Ireland. We wanted to raise awareness and kind of get a conversation going and obviously raise funds for Mental Health Ireland. So the 30 days of selfies campaign, you start off day one, you take your selfie of yourself doing something fun, whatever it is, something a bit different. Uh, you tag five friends and then you uh, text MHI to 50300 and then uh, to donate four euro. Then for the next 29 days, you just take your random selfies. And we're kind of trying to get people to make sure that they don't, you know, filters and life is wonderful because, you know, life isn't always wonderful. So it's to, to highlight that and just to show, get a bit of a laugh, get a conversation going around mental health issues. DCU's Disability and Learning Support Services offer a range of support services for students with mental health issues, as well as various other learning difficulties. The services include exam supports, in-class support and working with occupational therapists to ensure students have fair access to their study. We provide a range of supports to students who are registered in DCU with uh, specific learning difficulties like dyslexia, with medical conditions, with neurological conditions, physical disabilities, mental health difficulties and anything that impacts on the student to be able to attend classes. They can contact us uh, through our email disability.service at dcu.ie, call into us, we're here in CG28 in the Henry Grattan and also in room A102 on the St. Pat's campus and um, call us anything they, they, they feel they either call in drop us an email um, or drop into us and have a chat and we can have that initial chat if they're a bit I'm not sure what you can do for me I don't think there is anything um, or I'm not sure if I fall in your categories come in and have a chat with us and we can see if there's any supports we can offer them. We asked DC students what they knew about these services. They're clearly like very important. I know like there's the doors as well, like through the Henry Grattan where like you can push them and like they open. But other than that, I haven't really noticed many, but that could just be me being a bit ignorant because I don't have to think about it so much. But I'd hope that they are there and that there's that accessibility for people who don't have the same abilities that I am lucky enough to have. As far as I'm aware, and I'm sure the general consensus is the same, is that there's not nearly enough done in the disability services in DCU. I was aware of the physical uh, help out there for people, but the mental help is great. I wasn't actually aware that there was any of these services, but um, I do think it's important. It's a really good idea. TEDx is a programme of local self-organised events that is run in order to bring people together to share the thoughts of inspirational speakers. This year's TEDx DCU, which is an independently organised TED event, was held in the Helix with the theme being Imagining the Next Century. The event featured speakers from DCU's academic staff, including Marina Carr and Christine Loescher. Aaron McElroy reports. A TEDx talk was hosted by DCU last week and held in the Helix on the Glass Nevin campus. 
the talk looked at imagining the next century and featured speakers who are both DCU academic staff and alumni. The 2016 TEDx DCU was held in the Helix on the Glass Devon campus on November 10th. The talk projected into the future and explored how factors such as education, media and the arts can shape an even better future for citizens. In the future, Agamemnon, you have to admire the brazen stance. I say him stand here. Speakers included Irish playwright Marina Carr, lawyer Anne Power. In 18 months, we have seen how important social media and messaging has been in getting or the story of the election 2016 out to audiences. There was an app that uses Bluetooth to find your keys, which could be really handy. And one girl programmed a robot that can solve the Rubik's Cube. From the Coast Projects Awards and Carter Dojo, I've had so many amazing opportunities. In summer 2015, I went to Xbox Incubator, where I spent three weeks living in a big house over in London with 50 other girls going about how to run a tech business. Yeah, it was really cool being up on stage and the crowd was really nice and everything. So, yeah, it was pretty amazing. I think some people are really amazed and I'm so young and I've done so much already, but I just think that if every young person was given the opportunity to learn to code and given the opportunities to go to all these cool places, they could show me just as much as me. I don't think people should be amazed that I've done so much because anyone, any age can do this. This independently run TED Talk raised many questions and left with the audience something to think about. I'm Aaron McElroy for DCU TV News. That's all for this week's broadcast. Join me again in two weeks' time for more DCU TV News.